Well, the situation has changed slightly. We're still continuing to make the wine, but now it is raining. So uh, welcome to Appalachian weather. Can change on a dime, uh, but progress stops for no man or weather. If you're new to the project, a big warm welcome. If you're a tough old root, then welcome back. In today's video, we're making homemade wine, which starts with picking berries. I'm Josh, and this is our daughter, Ivy. I'm Celia, and this is our son, Hamish. Here on Steep in the Woods, we live completely off-grid on a 26-acre homestead nestled deep in the Appalachian Mountains. You'll see no fancy stuff here. It's just making do with what you have and what you can figure out. So today, me and Ivy are out here on the trail picking autumn olives, or you may know them by their more common name, choke cherries. These are very prolific here, um, and it's the peak season for them. So we're gonna pick them, just get as many as we can before the rain hits. I've got my patented uh, steep in the woods berry picking apparatus here, a bungee cord and a milk jug. And uh, hey, let's just come along and get us some berries. So me and Ivy are about to try some of these berries and uh, we'll get both takes on how they taste. Here you go, Gore. Here's a couple. I got me a bunch. Make sure there's no bad ones. You ready? We're gonna eat them. <gasps> sour, sour. Yep, they're pretty sour. And just like cherries, they have a large pit in them. But that's why I got a whole bunch of pits. Hold on a sec. That's why they invented cheesecloth, right? Whether you're making a jam or you're making wine or even some kind of, of fruit drink, uh, you would boil them, cook them, mash them, what, what have you, and then strain it with the cheesecloth. So the big pits doesn't actually make a difference for us in the preparation process, just adds one more step. I actually like them though. What do you think, girl? Do you like them? Isn't it cool that we get to go outside and pick all these berries? Look, they're everywhere. Every berries and food everywhere. Over it. Um, is it the water? These are our berries, sorted and de-stemmed. Any rotten ones, any ones that are not ripe enough for, for what we're doing have been tossed. And then we're just sliding this into a Ziploc bag. Once this is full, we will put it in the freezer. Isn't that cool? <sighs> You'll have to excuse me while I die here. Uh, it is some special kind of hot today, uh, which means I need to kind of do all the explaining and stuff quick because I just cannot leave the generator and therefore the air conditioner off for the kids all that long. Um, so hey, explain everything and then uh, and then we can we can cut that back on and and show you guys the process you know without having to worry about that audio uh, interruptions. So hey, here we go. So it's been about a month and a half 
uh, that's how long it took us to pick all of these berries. Uh, these berries are great. I think they're gonna make a quality wine. They're gonna make a quality product, but they are tiny and tedious to pick. Everyone helped, even Hamish. Uh, and we have about 12 pounds sitting right here, 12 pounds of berries. You know, the, really, you only necessarily need around 10, but because these are, well, they're autumn olives, but uh, uh, the common name for them is choke cherries. So the important bit there, the important bit that I'm getting at is that a cherry has a pit, right? That's kind of what one of the things cherries are known for other than their color, flavor, size, genre, and everything else. Uh, these have a decent sized pit in them. That's a large seed. So I went ahead and picked a little bit more. Uh, you know, 10 pounds is just a general rule. Uh, uh, some things have, have, have less seed to, to fruit ratio. Some things have more. This has slightly more. So I went with 12 pounds, which added probably another week and a half of picking. Um, 12 pounds of berries. You got your pot, you got your burner, your jug, a uh, huge bag of sugar. You're gonna need a ton of sugar. I'm blanking on exactly how much we need for our four gallon pot right at this second. Uh, but it's an awful lot of sugar. Get the big one. Uh, so berries, pots, jug. As far as jug, the best thing to do price-wise, because, you know, obviously we, we're trying to do this on a budget. Uh, I think everyone is. If you're not, you don't need to watch my video. Uh, either way, this is the best deal, right? One of these, like, stand-up water jug replacement jugs. Um, just go to the store and get one that has water in it, right? Which brings me to another point water quality. The majority of your wine is going to be water. That's what it is. The wine is a liquid and the liquid part comes from the water. Quality water is crucial, right? This water came right out of our, our, our pipe, out of our spring, out of our mountain. It is the best water you can get. No filtration needed. But if you don't live somewhere with amazing spring water, uh, that would also be a plus to getting this type of this type of jug here Not only is it cheap, but it does come with good quality water in it. It says it's spring water But it ain't the same as what we got here Other than that you need your bung. That's what goes in the top of it and then a bubbler That's what creates your your, your airlock seal allows gases to escape but not to enter You also need cheesecloth to, to strain out all of the solids out of whatever fruit you happen to be using uh, You know hey a lighter a little scoop, uh, yeast. I always go with champagne yeast, right? So the idea is that we're making wine. You know, wine is wine for a reason. It's not juice. It's the alcohol that makes it what it is. And that's really why we're doing it. You know, uh, you, you live somewhere like this, you work as hard as we do. Uh, there ain't nothing wrong with a relaxing drink uh, within moderation. Uh, so either way, the champagne yeast is tolerant for a higher uh, uh, alcohol by volume content or level, which means that any other type of wine is going to, or, or not uh, any other type of yeast is going to crap out before it gets to, to uh, uh, as high of a level as champagne yeast will. So champagne yeast doesn't cost any more. If it does, it's not enough to notice. Uh, get it and you'll have a stronger wine. So rock and roll. The idea here, put your berries in your pot with some water, boil them up, mash them up, and then strain them with cheesecloth. Add that liquid into your jug, and then heat up some water, put your sugar in it till it dissolves. There's a certain amount, we'll link that somewhere, a uh, certain amount per gallon. If you want a sweet wine, right? Like a dessert wine, something that the ladies will like, um, add more sugar. But for us here, I just want a good solid wine. I, it don't need to be sugary. Uh, it don't need to be incredibly dry. We're just going with a generic, normal amount of sugar per the alcohol content your yeast can handle. So either way, the number will be somewhere up here, down here, wherever. Um, you're gonna add that, get that into a, a liquid state, put that in your jug, add your yeast, top off your jug with more of that good clear water, throw on your bubbler and your, uh, and your, and your bung, and uh, put this in a spot where it'll be warm. Not super hot, not cold, just warm. Wait a while and you'll be ready to rock and roll. So now we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna cut the generator back on for the kids and for Celia, cause it really is just a special, a stupid level of hot here. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and cook this, make this, get it ready, pour it in. And then once we are done and the thing is capped with its bubbler, I'll come back and talk to y'all a little bit more.
so I didn't even know that we had this. Uh, so if you have one of these, like we do, figure that out to begin with and blend your stuff up first. So some kind of bionic something. Should we put a link in the description? Uh, yeah, hold on, all right. This is so much easier than smushing them by hand. Hey, and there we go. Uh, no need to squish them by hand for like an hour. Right about the time we were starting to dissolve our sugar, the storm of the century showed up. We had high winds and heavy rains. Both myself and Celia stuck it through though, although we were not able to film very much of it. Um, this isn't really the kind of thing you can pause. But regardless, dissolve your uh, sugar the correct amount and add that to your jug. Well, the situation has changed slightly. We're still continuing to make the wine, but now it is raining. So uh, welcome to Appalachian weather. Could change on a dime, uh, but progress stops for no man or weather. What do you think, Dave? <laughs> Jackie break. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for the carport. Luckily, it's not too far from where we're making the wine. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, we'd just be screwed. We'd be in a tiny camper. With nothing. What? I love sharing my life with you guys. <laughs> so this kind of went pear shape on us. Here it is, almost dark. Thank you, Rain. Uh, the thing that took us the most time was not being able to filter it easily without it cooling down. So we let it cool off and then it got later and later and then it started raining, which, you know, brought its own issues. But either way, hey, now all we gotta do, like I, like I say, you know, Take your sugar water, add it to your jug, toss in some yeast, and you're ready to rock and roll. It 
And there you have it. This jug is filled. It's not only got our berry juice, it's got our water and our sugar in it. The only thing that we're lacking is putting our yeast and capping it with a bubbler. You need to put this in a warm spot, not hot, not cold. Give it about two weeks and then there is more to this process, which will be in an upcoming video. If you guys want to see us use actual wine bottles, there are some on the Amazon wish list. Otherwise, we will just use mason jars because that's what we have as off-grid homesteader gardener people. Uh, and that will work. You just cannot store them long term. But yeah, hey, let's put the yeast in, in here. Let's put our bubbler on and we'll just set it somewhere nice and cozy and come back in about two weeks. I've got a packet of Red Star yeast. This is champagne yeast. I would encourage you guys to get that unless you're making, you know, unless you're making beer or something else that you don't want that higher alcohol content with. Um, I'll put a link to all of this stuff in the description. Although, like I say, the, the barrel was bought just at a regular store and, uh, and, and it, you know, it was one that already had water in it. So now we just add our yeast, put on our bubbler. So we're just gonna add this in. That's it, you use the entire packet. And we have our bubbler here. I did have to get a larger bung to fit this particular uh, jug. Uh, but the idea, it has a little level here that says max. You add your water to it, to that level. And then given just a little bit of time, you'll see it start bubbling. The bubbling is what you're looking for. Um, whenever it stops bubbling. And I mean, you're watching it for an extended period of time and it has no bubbles. That's when it's ready for the next step. And we're done. Hey, we are set. Give it a couple weeks and come back guys. And there you have it. Our wine is done. All we have to do now is wait and I'll be sure to bring y'all along for the rest of this process in time. As always, if you liked what you saw, hit that button. If you're new to the project, hit that other button. You will help support the project. There are links below. Until next time, here, Steve in the Woods. Yeah, this should make like 16 bottles or something. Maybe it's only 12, but a lot, man. <laughs>